One day, my 11-year-old uh, daughter, Willow, uh, came to me and said, Mommy, did you know that there were girls my age in the United States that um, are being trafficked for sex? And I didn't. Jada Smith is back in the spotlight, and it's messier this time. After CNN put her on blast, exposing her as Diddy's little minion, she's been panicking more than ever. The streets have been buzzing with rumors for years about something fishy between Diddy, Will, and Jada. And with Diddy getting confronted and Gene Deal dropping some eye-opening revelations, we might finally get the answers we've been waiting for. When you were dating J-Lo, Will Smith and Jada tried to pick her up on a threesome and you were gonna beat up Will Smith, is that true? Really heard that? Yeah, yeah, I watched it on, on the internet. You're yeah. telling me I can't believe everything I read? What? <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. Tell me the story about how Puffy wanted to fight Will Smith over Jennifer Lopez. Oh, man. Um, we were at a birthday party that I think either Matt Damien was giving for Ben Affleck. It was just a little gathering. It was at the Four Seasons. Will Smith and his sister and her husband, we were all sitting on this side of the room. Matt Damien, uh, Ben Affleck, Jennifer Lopez, Puff, Will Smith, and uh, Jada, and they were sitting on the other side of the room. So I know Puff so well that he stood up. When he stood up, he walks and like, and did his own some, some kind of way like, and then he went like this, you know, like and I went over towards him. I know to go over there towards him. So I go over towards him and he said to me, he said, yo, I think Will and Jada is trying to scoop up Jennifer. I want you to stay close because I'm a snuffer. <laughs> I said to myself, Will Smith gonna beat the s out you. <laughs> now, Puff, 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 is, Puff is scrap now, but I don't think he could beat Will Smith. You know what I'm saying? But well, he can scrap. You know what I'm saying? So then, he said that s <laughs> So, I didn't go back over there where um, Will Smith's sister and her husband was. I stay like in the, like about, if he snuffed Will, I could move slow enough that Will could probably get two or three punches back in. <laughs> yeah, but uh, that shit was funny. He thought that uh, Jada and Will was coming on too strong to Jennifer, making advances. The thing about pot, stuff was always jumping off was always popping. So Pac was cool with, I'm coming to your spot, you can, or you can meet me at my spot over here, but it wasn't any like, we're going, you, I, come to the club with me, go to the, that was a no-no. I was really concerned about He went up there to see Pac. And he was still in jail when he told me, and he said um, that he was gonna sign with Suge, because Pac had been waiting because of the nature of his charges, he was like, these men need to come 
need to come get me, specifically these men who are making money off of me. We were like, we'll get you out of here, we'll raise the money. And we were, we're here, we'll get you back. out. Yeah, his back. Mm -hmm. He was like, I, he was like, no. So with Shug, he felt like, look, this is, I'm a, I owe him three albums and I'm done. No wonder their marriage has been such a roller coaster. In a jaw-dropping turn of events, Jada Smith spills the tea in her book, revealing that she and Will separated way back in 2016. Can you believe that? They deserve an award for their acting skills, keeping this under wraps for so long. It is not your responsibility to make your wife happy, right? Just like it's not my wife's responsibility to make me happy. It's my responsibility to make me happy, and it's her responsibility to make her happy, and then we're gonna come together and build on that happiness. Will Smith is continuing to get candid about his marriage to Jada Pinkett Smith. The 53-year-old actor is featured in a new cover story for GQ and discusses the revelations in his upcoming memoir titled Will. The Philadelphia native reveals that Jada was not the only one engaging in other relationships outside of their marriage. He explains, quote, We have given each other trust and freedom, with the belief that everybody has to find their own way. And marriage for us can't be a prison. And I don't suggest our road for anybody. I don't suggest this road for anybody, but the experiences and the freedoms that we've given one another and the unconditional support to me is the highest definition of love. Anything that I need to make myself happy, I will present that to my wife that I need that to be happy. Divorce is not an option, we are gonna be together. So we're gonna figure out how to be happy. The Independence Day star also touches on his fantasies involving other women and candidly discusses working with an intimacy coach. Will's greatest desire in the world? To have a harem of girlfriends. Specifically, Will names Misty Copeland and Halle Berry and says his intimacy coach even worked on the list with him. Will tells the mag, quote, I don't know where I saw it or some as a teenager, but the idea of traveling with 20 women that I loved and took care of and all of that, it seemed like a really great idea. And then after we played it out a little bit, I was like, that would be horrific. That would be horrific. I was like, can you imagine how miserable? The Oscar nominee says that the intimacy coach was cleaning out my mind, letting it know it was okay to be me and be who I was. At the end of the day, it's just not quitting. You know? In the GQ article, it's noted that Will does not go into much detail about his 23-year marriage to Jada in his memoir. Will and I shared some very private truths about our relationship. The Hitch star says that a lot of details regarding their relationship have already been made public, including Jada's entanglement with singer August Alsina, which she opened up about on her Facebook watch show, Red Table Talk, in July 2020. I got into a different kind of entanglement. Mm -hmm. with August. And one thing I want to get clear about and clean up, one of the things that was kind of swirling in the press about you giving permission, mm -hmm. which is, uh, you know, the only person that could give permission in, in, in that particular uh, uh, yeah. circumstance is myself. Yes, a relationship. Yes, it was yeah. a relationship, absolutely. I was in a lot of pain and I was very broken. Now, in the process of that relationship, I definitely realized that you can't find happiness outside of yourself. Will explains to the mag in part, quote, Jada never believed in conventional marriage. And for the large part of our relationship, monogamy was what we chose, not thinking of monogamy as the only relational perfection. I actually sat down with Will and had a conversation. He gave me his blessing. I totally gave myself to that relationship for years of my life. And I truly and really, really deeply loved and have a ton of love for her. As for why Will and Jada publicly reacted to August's comments about his relationship with Jada, to protect themselves. Quote, we sort of came to the agreement that authenticity was the release from the shackles of fame and public scrutiny. And though Will says he and Jada are in a much better place now, he opens up in his book about some of the toughest moments in their marriage. According to an excerpt from Will's memoir, Obtained by GQ, the actor writes that they reached a breaking point in 2011 on Jada's 40th birthday. Something they also opened up about on Red Table Talk. Your 40th birthday was my low point. The day after her 37th birthday, I hired a team to orchestrate her 40th birthday. I had hired a documentary team. I right. traced mommy's family roots. 
her 40th birthday was going to be my thing. And she's told me that the party was the most ridiculous display of my ego. Despite the hurdles, the Suicide Squad star has opened up about why their decades-long marriage works many times, including 2015, when he told E.T. this. You can't expect it to be easy. It's like I'm, our marriage was the most difficult, grueling, and excruciating thing that we've ever and taken on in our lives. And, you know, we're just not quitters. And by the same token, we're not apathetic. Yeah. So we're not gonna sit there and let it, you know, be painful. We're gonna keep working. And if there is a is a secret, I would say, is that we, we, we never went into uh, working on our relationship. We only ever worked on ourselves individually and then presented ourselves to one another better than we were previously. In my friend group, I'm the only polyamorous person and I have the least <laughs> out of all of my friends. Willow Smith brought the newest debate to Red Table Talk. It takes practice to have those difficult conversations. On Wednesday, the multi-generation dynamic got personal once again, this time with Willow's revelation that she's polyamorous. This has been a journey for you, Miss Willow. How did you make this decision? With polyamory, I feel like the main foundation is the freedom to be able to create a relationship style that works for you and not just stepping into monogamy because that's what everyone around you says is the right thing to right. do. The 20-year-old singer opened up about her perspective on polyamory relationships, helping her mom and Gammy understand her desire to have to have multiple intimate partners at the same time. So right. I was like, how can I structure the way that I approach relationships with that in mind? Yeah. Yeah. Also, doing research into polyamory, the main reasons why monogamous relationships or my, why marriage why divorces happen is infidelity. Yeah. yeah. Let's say you haven't always been the kind of person that wanted to have all the time, mm -hmm. but your partner is. Right. Mm -hmm. Are you going to be the person to say, you know, just because I don't have these needs, you can't have them either? Right. Throughout the series, all three women have maintained an open mind with topics about and mom Jada Pinkett Smith's reaction here was no different. How did you feel when I told you that I was polyamorous? When you were like, hey, this is my get down, I was like, I totally get it. Wanting to set up your life in a way that you can have what it is that you want. I think anything goes as long as the intentions are clear. You know it, what I mean? To everyone. Yeah. Most people right. are practicing monogamy because they feel like they have no other choice. Right. We all know that most people out here doing unethical, non-monogamy, right. any unethical. damn way. <laughs> and while Gammy tried to understand the concept, the matriarch pointed out that many people still believe in monogamous relationships. There's comfort in that it provides to almost like a social order. Yes. To life and setting boundaries yeah. and commitments. Most, I guess I'm not really clear on what, what it, it offers you. Could you imagine being in a group and loving everyone equally? No. Whether it be platonic or not? Mm -mm. Wow, well then I don't know what to say. That's because yeah. of Gam's ideas around love. The conversation also looked to the future, and Willow admitted that for her to walk down the aisle one day, there would need to be some stipulations in place first. What are your feelings and ideas around marriage as you know it today? The history of marriage really irks me. Yeah. <laughs> um, just the history of marriage as a whole and what it has represented over the years for women in particular, I feel like the only way that I would get married is, let's say me and my partner or partners want to help people and we need to put our finances together in order to make that vision happen. Mm -hmm. That's the only way I could see myself getting married. These revelatory conversations have become a trademark of Red Table Talk, and Jada told E.T. the secret behind their intense discussions. Hey, but what is it about this table when people come and sit here? What's that magic sauce that just makes people say, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna spill it. Well, I guess I don't. I think it's not even so much because that's never our our intention. Yeah, so, yeah exactly. You know, we just always want to have just real conversations, mm -hmm. and so I think it's um, we're in the conversation with you. Right. Yeah. yeah we're we're. We're, we're, we're sharing. sharing our stories, we're sharing our experiences. It's a safe space for one another. What does it mean to love in freedom? 
The simple idea is it's friendship versus marital prison. Ooh. Does right. that mean you all can have other partners, but you just have to be respectful with each other? So people only think in terms of ass. People are trying to put something on it. Will and Jada, they what they what they doing with other people? Yeah. Right? Will and Jada ain't really doing too much of nothing. <laughs> <laughs> the goal is not a actual goal. We're gonna love each other no matter, no matter what. what. Will gets right to the heart of their non-traditional marriage during the Oprah conversation, Will Smith, out today on Apple TV+. Plus. The couple first revealed details last year on Red Table Talk, which coined a new term. I got into a different kind of entanglement. An entanglement? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. A relationship. Yes. Was that hard for you sitting there? No. <laughs> it's like... No. How long were you all actually separated? Was it months or years? We never actually, like, officially separated. We agreed that she had to make herself happy and I had to make myself happy. And then we were going to present ourselves back to the relationship. We ride together. We, we die, die together. together. Bad marriage for life. <laughs> It's a far cry from the start of their relationship. In his new memoir titled Will, out Tuesday, he writes, quote, we drank every day and had multiple times every day for four straight months. There were only two possibilities. I was going to satisfy this woman or I was going to die trying. Those early days were spectacular. It turned, it, it ended up being a lot more complex than that, bro. <laughs> you just feel like it ain't really nobody, no, nobody's, nobody's business. Nobody's business, yeah, but... Yeah. But now Black Twitter has claimed it <laughs> as their business. <laughs> but, you know, I... I think um, you need to say clearly what happened. As far as what? You and I decided we were going to take our space and what happened. An entanglement? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. A relationship. Yes, it was a yes. relationship. Now, well, in the process, mm -hmm. And like you and I were also going through a process of healing in a much different manner. Mm -hmm. I would definitely say we did. And it all started with, you know, me wanting to help his health, his mental state. Because for me, that was the thing when I, when, um, when Og first came around, he was, he was really, really sick. sick. He was really, you know? really sick. Yeah. And the outpouring for him from our family goes uh, initially about his health. Yeah. And I mean, we found, mm -hmm. you know, to, mm -hmm. and from there, you know. Yeah. And we decided. I was done with your you, Yeah, you kicked me to I the curb. I was done with you. Yeah. <laughs> we Marriages have that, though. Yeah, Marriages have that. Yeah. We, we decided that we were going to, oh, figure out how to make yourself happy and I'll figure out how to make myself happy. Well, at, I really felt like we could be over. And then what did you do, Jada? Well, you know, I think from there, you know, as time went on mm -hmm. with August. I launched into an interaction. What do you feel like um, you were looking for? Mm -hmm. It had been, and it was, I think that has a lot, which is another thing that I had to learn to break in this cycle, just mm -hmm. that idea of needing to fix and being drawn whether it's your health or whether it's your addictions. Mm -hmm. There's something about fixing people mm -hmm. versus, mm -hmm. and taught me that. Because I wasn't sure I was ever going to speak to you again. I know, I know. Yeah, like the fact that I'm speaking to you again is a... <laughs> is a miracle um <laughs> i would agree there's just certain things that you have to go through and it's like and i wish <laughs> i do i wish that yeah, wasn't sure. the hey, case i sure wish it could be all magic and mirror yeah you gotta go mm. you know and i'm just happy there's a real power in the just knowing somebody's riding with you no matter what you can't know that until you go until through some through some stuff, you know? I don't want to go through this no more. I'm going to get you back first. <laughs> I think you, <laughs> I think we're good on that, okay? <laughs> okay, that might, that's probably true. That's you know, true. um, and I don't think it's about- No, for me it is. Um, I'll give you that petty <laughs> that's what you want. <laughs> uh.
Uh, um, but, you know, I will definitely say, nothing. you know. 25 years and counting. Mm, we, we died, died together. together. Bad, Bad marriage, marriage for life. life. <laughs> 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 uh, that's terrible. <laughs> Um, but yeah, it's, uh, it's just... I told you the first year we were, were married, I can love you through anything. And I didn't believe you. I thought I was that, that I didn't have the girth that it was going to take to ride with I you didn't, through. Yeah, I didn't know. How am I doing? Mm -hmm. right. <laughs> You're awesome. <laughs> this is where things get even more twisted. We can't say for sure if this is Diddy's influence creeping into Jada's life. But the latest buzz is seriously alarming. Word is, Jada has been pushing Jaden toward drugs, even introducing him to psychedelics. When we said we wanted to bring him to the table, I was like, well, what do you want to talk about? He said, mushrooms. Yeah. Yeah. The magic kind, of course. Yeah. Jaden Smith joins his mom, Jada Pinkett Smith, and grandma, Adrian Banfeld Norris, on Red Table Talk. And they're talking magic mushrooms, people. But since it's my mom, it's like, you know, it's my mom, we're working together. On the latest episode of the Facebook Watch series, the fam talks about the plant medicine that some say is a miracle treatment for mental health. I was introduced to plant medicine 10 years ago mm -hmm. to deal with my depression, yeah. and it knocked it out. Something Jada says she can speak to from personal experience. What it does, unlike just going to therapy and putting people on Prozac, right, which yeah. I did that too, which um, that is not successful for so many not, people. It's not, and that's the thing. So for me, I had struggled with depression for so long. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, crippling depression. So the thing about the plant medicine is that not only does it help you feel better, but it, it helps you solve the problems of how you got there in the first place. As for Jaden, he says recent studies that toted mushrooms as one of the most significant advances in treating depression over more traditional antidepressants inspired his use of psychedelics. It started as pure curiosity. curiosity. Yeah. The 23-year-old added that he started using the drugs out of curiosity and doing so led to his understanding of what ego was for the first time. It was always in my head talking, telling me what I was and what I wasn't. And for the first time, I had like a ego dissolution where I was like, that was the moment that really changed me. You get to a place in your life where you're blocked by something, whether it's a trauma, whether it's your emotions, your ego, not being able to express yourself. And then I feel like psychedelics are a way to tear down that wall and see what's beyond it. Doing it guided with people that are professionals, I feel like really increases the chances of having that mystical um, experience. Since psychedelics are still illegal, Jaden says it's important to be guided by a professional, which the table agrees is the only way some people can feel safe enough to leave themselves in such a vulnerable position. You gotta wanna do it. This is not play play. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you gotta be really willing to confront some hard stuff. Yeah. yeah. And it's, it's very healing and it's changed my life. Jada has been open about her struggle with depression in the past. In fact, back in 2018, she opened up about one of the more difficult times in her life during a chat with E.T. I just felt like um, I needed more freedom. The public wants you to be a certain way. Your family needs you in a certain way. Your partner needs you to be something, you know. And for me, that just was never you know, I'm really a free spirit at heart. I really am, and I always have been. And um, I just felt like my life had got constricted into this little box, and it was strangling me, basically. <laughs> you know, it broke my heart when I heard her talking about it. Really, just that whole period, I had no idea. Because I really had no to idea. figure out a lot of things for myself, and I didn't want to burden anyone. Of course, the Smiths are no strangers to getting candid and leaving it all out on the table, something the 50-year-old actress told E.T. is important to her. It takes practice to have those difficult conversations with kindness and consideration. And it's just something that we have to continue to practice because if we don't talk about it, we're not gonna get to the other side. We're just gonna, you know, things are just gonna stay in the cracks and fester. So the more that we can bring these difficult subjects to light and talk about it, the more we can purify these subjects and bring them into something new. 
And so um, that's why it's important for me. Jada Pinkett Smith is at the center of her family's trips, and we don't mean vacations. The actress shares 24-year-old son Jaden and 22-year-old daughter Willow with Will Smith. And according to USA Today, while speaking at the Psychedelic Science Conference in Denver, Colorado on June 23rd, Jaden revealed it was Jada who introduced him to psychedelics. Per the outlet, he recalled, I think it was my mom, actually, that was really the first one to make that step for the family. It was just her for a really, really long time. And then eventually it just trickled and evolved and everybody found it in their own ways. And it looks like Jaden's story checks out. During a 2021 episode of Red Table Talk, Jada opened up about using magic mushrooms 10 years prior to help with her depression. Unlike just going to therapy and putting people on Prozac, right? Which yeah. I did that too. Which um, that is not successful for so many not. people. And that's the thing. So for me, I had struggled with depression for so long. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, crippling depression. So the thing about the plant medicine is that not only does it help you feel better, but it, it helps you solve the problems of how you got there in the first place. Meanwhile, during an episode of My Next Guest Needs No Introduction in 2022, Will told David Letterman that around 2011, he did ayahuasca 14 times over a two-year period. I realized that anything that happens in my life, I can handle it. I can handle any person I lose. I can handle anything that goes wrong in my life. I can handle anything in my marriage. I can handle anything that this life has to offer me. As for Jaden's takeaway, according to USA Today, he continued, siblings can argue so much and fight so much. And Lord knows me and my siblings have done so much of that in the past. But the level of love and empathy that I can feel for them inside of the psychedelic experiences and outside of the experiences has been something that's profound and beautiful. Will also shares son Trey with ex-wife Cherie Zampino. I love Justin Bieber, that's just a fact. Well, talk about brotherly love. You couldn't miss this moment on your feeds, Justin Bieber giving pal Jaden Smith a kiss on the cheek at Coachella. I'm having a good time. The now viral video shows Jaden sneaking up from behind the beads, grabbing his waist for a little dance, and then there's this. Justin sweetly giving his bro a kiss, something that's become the talk of the internet. He's really just like a brother to me. Yeah, these two go way back. Guess who? J Smith and JB. Uh-huh. I got you, little bro. That's 16-year-old Justin and 11-year-old Jaden when they collaborated on the pop star's 2010 song, Never Say Never. I think that it's cool to just collaborate with people who you know which was also the theme song for Jaden's film, The Karate Kid. I've gotten to a place where I have like a core group and people who are really supporting me and encouraging me. And uh, I never had that before. You know, I never had, I never created those type of relationships. So now it feels like I have so much. I honestly just love him and like what he's doing, like and the amount of change he's been able to make in the world is just insane. Life is hard, you know, we all go through things, you know what I'm saying? But the difference between other people is that no one knows about it. You know what I'm saying? And it's really difficult for people like Justin, for me, for all types of people in the limelight. Justin and Jaden clearly unapologetic about the bond they've created over the years. Well, I think that he's amazing, like honestly, and this reunion was one of the many magical moments for the two in the desert during Coachella Weekend One. The Biebs joined Tim's and WizKids Sunday night to perform their collab, Essence, with LA radio station 102.7 KISS FM sharing footage on the gram. Justin's wife, Haley, also supporting her hubby from the crowd, writing, oh, hey, baby. He's just really sweet. He's a good part, and uh, I love him. Now, when it comes to the Smiths, 
Yep, Jaden's dad will surprise fans by joining Jay Balvin on stage for an out of this world performance of Men in Black. With all that went down during weekend one, we'll surely be keeping our eyes peeled for Coachella weekend two. So, what do you think? Does Jada Smith sound like she's one of Diddy's minions? Let us know in the comments below. And if you like this video, hit that subscribe button so that you never miss out on any new videos. And until then fam, keep it real.